What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Today we have got the first leaked benchmarks for the upcoming AMD 7000 series which was revealed a couple of days ago. These leaks are going to be courtesy of the actual Geekbench database. So this isn't just some random Twitter user posting it online. These are from the actual database with single threaded and multi-threaded numbers for the Ryzen 9 7950X and the Ryzen 5 7600X compared up against benchmarks that have already been posted on the Geekbench database for the upcoming Intel Raptor Lake 13,000 series of processors. So we're going to take a look at it and see if all of the other stories out there are true about AMD murdering Intel. Is it true? We'll find out in just a moment. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's gonna be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds, or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first off, I just want to preface this by saying uh, the the uh, announcement the other night was very exciting. I'm actually leaning towards going with AMD uh, for my for my upcoming build. Uh, I do think at the end of the day, the, the 13,000 series is probably still going to end up being the faster uh, gaming processor, but there's a lot of exciting stuff with the 7,000 series, PCIe Gen 5, and all that kind of stuff. So very exciting, very affordable-ish, considering the amount of performance that you're going to be able to get out of these CPUs. So I am, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to upgrade my 9900K, which is getting along in the tooth. So as of right now, I'm leaning towards going with the 7950X, but we'll just have to wait and see once these things actually come out and we can uh, see some reliable third-party testing and hopefully I can get included in this review lineup and uh, test out the AMD processors, even though they very well might end up losing at the end of the day to Raptor Lake when it comes uh, to gaming performance. So Let's shoot over to Video Cards, who has all of this data up for us conveniently, even though you can find it yourself on the Geekbench database, where we could see the first scores coming up for the Ryzen 9 7950X, getting a single core score of 2917 and a multi core score of 24,396. Extremely impressive when you consider the, uh, the, the cores, the price, and everything on this processor. It is an absolute beast of a CPU for the 7950X, which is why I am leaning towards maybe going with that uh, for my upcoming build. There's other factors at play here as well as things like Intel with their E-cores that uh, just, it just, I don't, I don't, it seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. And there are some applications that don't fully leverage those E-cores and take advantage of them in games as well. So I would just rather have those physical cores and the hype, standard hyper-threading like we've seen for years from Intel as well as AMD. Not to say that the E cores are bad by any means. When they're are when they're being fully utilized, they are just as good as standard multi-threading, and uh, they do some really impressive stuff when they do get fully utilized. But there's certain applications that I like to use where they don't get fully utilized and fully leveraged. So I would just rather have all of that performance at you know at my disposal, no matter what application that I'm using. So that's one of the reasons. But also I said like PCIe Gen 5 getting that faster faster SSDs and all of that with games starting to maybe utilize SSDs for actual game performance with streaming textures and things in DirectX 12 titles. So there you go. 
Let's shoot down here to this Geekbench performance chart, which was also provided by videocards.com, where you can see we've got the upcoming Ryzen 7000 series Raphael, as well as down here we've got Raptor Lake, we've also got 12,000 series and the previous 5000 series from AMD. So very good look here at the basic CPU performance uh, in Geekbench, where we can see the 16 core 32 thread 7950X, as I said, pulled in a single core score of 2017, multi core 24 396. Comparing that with the previous generation Intel, the 12900K, which is currently, you know, their best ones out right now, it is beating that for sure. Beating the 12900K, which has a score of 1936 and the multi core of 17272, beating both of those handily, and you would expect it to beat the multi core as the current multi, uh, the current. Uh, 12900K tops out at 24 threads, while the 13900K is going to be jumping up to 24 cores, 32 threads. But again, some of those are going to be E cores. So, you know, take it for what it is. But there with the Raptor Lake 13900K, we see a score of 2314 for the single core, which beats the 7950X. That which gets 2217. So it's beating it there, not by like a tremendous margin, but it is winning. And then when it comes to the multi core, even though they both are going to end up having 32 threads, it does beat it again by not like a, not like a super significant margin, but it does beat it. 24,396 on the 7950X versus the 13900K coming out with 26. 464. And uh, the 7600X actually is looking like a, like a champ because in terms of single core, it pulls in a 2174, which is actually faster than the 13700K and 13600K in terms of single core performance. But the Intel Raptor Lake stuff has higher thread counts, 16 core 24 thread and uh, 14 core 20 thread respectively. So they do end up winning out in uh, multi-threaded compared to the, the 7600X, but also we don't have Ryzen 7 listed here, but that would still probably fall just behind the 13700K. So, you know, take it for what it is. But at the end of the day, what we're seeing here is that, you know, Intel is is winning and they may end up costing more at the end of the day, but they're, uh, they're still winning. So are they murdering Intel? No, it's not a complete annihilation. I think they're both going to be very strong processors and no matter which one you pick up, they'll probably be very viable to use for the next three to five, maybe even more so years. As I said, I'm still running a 9900K and there's very few games where I actually feel limited. Of course, I could always use more cores for video rendering and things of the like, but it really hasn't been until the new Spider-Man game where I actually felt limited with the 9900K because the 12900K in certain scenarios in that game when using ray tracing can run like 30 to 50% faster, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. That's not like just a few frames, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of more frames there in old Spider-Man, and I have the fear that we're going to continue to see that trend moving forward with Unreal Engine 5 games and more titles coming out utilizing the hardware of the next-gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I think with the way that games are being optimized for those, if we want to see that same level of optimization on PC, we're going to need developers to optimize like that for PC as well on a wide range of hardware. So it's going to require, I feel like, the faster NVMEs and all of that higher core count CPUs. So that's why I'm thinking about upgrading. And as I said, it's between the 7950X and 1300K, but right now I am leaning towards uh, that 7950X. Price has a big part to do with it. Don't have the pricing yet for the Intel stuff, but for $699 for a 32 thread, CPU that boosts right out of the box to 5.7 gigahertz and an 80 megabyte cache, 170 watt TDP, which I've read reports that that is not like the true TDP, like it can boost up to 230 watts, I think I believe was the number, um, if you leave the thing fully unlocked and all of that. So it, honestly, the TDP part doesn't really bother me all that much. Maybe it won't be as efficient as previous Ryzen parts, but at the end of the day, it's more cores, more threads, and it's running faster. So as long as I don't need to upgrade my power supply, which is a 1250 watt, I'm sure I'll be absolutely fine, depending on what the uh, new RTX 4000 cards use. But if I have to upgrade, I have to upgrade. It is what it is. That's what happens with PCs. You get more powerful components and you need more powerful pro uh, power supplies. It's just the way things are. Uh, but also we've got the 7900X, which also looks very compelling at 549. Honestly, that's another one I would, I would maybe even consider 24 threads there still. It's going to be very, very fast for games, probably more than enough for years to come. We've also got the 7700X, 
at $399, and then the 7600X rounding it out at $299. So that's the full stack there uh, from AMD, at least what we've seen so far until we start seeing the 3D parts, which already are getting rumors of uh, launching early next year and maybe seeing a showing at CES 2023. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the upcoming AMD lineup. Are you going Team Red? Are you going Team Blue? Which one are you looking to pick up later this year if you are even looking to do an upgrade at all? Obviously, if you're on an AMD 5000 series or a 12 series from Intel, there's no reason for you to run out there and upgrade to any of these processors. But for people like myself that are on 9900Ks or maybe you're on like a 2000, 3000 series Ryzen, it might be time to consider upgrading depending on if you're seeing any, any limitations or bottlenecks in the types of games and applications that you're playing. But CPUs are one of those things that I feel like I can usually hang on to for like almost five years or so before I really need to consider upgrading. And it's starting to get to that point. So that's sort of my thought process, but I'd like to hear yours down in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Peace.